Hi, this is Christoph with Click, and today I'm going to talk about REST Connector Deluxe. It's this time real life hard work with REST APIs because I think it's sometimes a little bit odd to work with the REST Connector if you don't know what you're doing and I've made it pretty easy. So if you can do it in Postman, you can do it in script having watched this video. Then we will pre-configure two placeholder REST connections and work with a bearer token in our example, a pretty common authentication method, and then we will query data and we will dynamically set the parameters and work with JSON in the request body. So really all the hard stuff that you might come around when you work with APIs. So first of all, Postman is a good tool. It's your friend. So get it free from getpostman.com and try out the APIs first according to the supplier's description, which is often provided in a Swagger documentation. So first what you would do is create a new collection for your project. I already have mine and then start creating your requests. I'm starting off here with a request against an authentication endpoint. Uh, I have to provide some username, password, and as I send it, I'll get a response back. Once you have this response, click save here and save example. So two times save. Uh, now you can close the window that has just been created. And uh, what we got here, by the way, is the access token for the subsequent requests. So when we do a simple get request in the next one. Actually, I have to go to authentication, paste the bearer token here, click preview request. Now um, it put that into a specific syntax. It's bearer plus the token. I'm sending the request and I'm saving the result. Also save the example. So close this. And now you can also see coming back to that page that you have one example saved. We have that also here. And the third request, and this is really a little bit more complicated one, um, I have to provide something in the body of the post request, as well as the header, and the same thing here with the bearer token and stuff. So also this is sent, waits for an answer, save it, save the example. Why am I saving the examples? It's because we are going to mock them now. Click on mock collection, click on create, click on that URL that you just received. And under that URL, we can test the same endpoints, but without any overhead of authenticating. That's really cool. Now we make our fingers dirty, create a new app. It's now time to create the two connections. It's just a placeholder for the time being, and it will later be parameterized with script. So go to the script editor, create a new section, create a new connection. So for the post request, I'm using this endpoint Call it post, create the connection, create another one for the get and select anonymous and call this one get, create the connection. So basically creating a REST call, we will do always in two steps. The first step is how to get the syntax right. So we use Postman's mock server to get the syntax right. We will create temporarily a third connection. This doesn't need any authentication and it just works. The result will be parsed and the load script will be created. Now we're going to create even a third one and we will use the mock page that we just received here. Copy the mock URL you got in Postman to the clipboard. Then we go to the REST connector and depending on the method it had, a GET or a POST, you will also 
do this now. So the first one is was a post request. I had to call API authentication. That was a post request. But I don't need to do anything else. Just put this as anonymous and call this test and we create it. So the lovely thing is now the select data button. This does all the work because it's going to create a script that I would not be able to write out of my head to traverse back the JSON into a click syntax. So now we get to the second part to get the endpoint parameters work. So this time we will look into Postman and retype what we did there. So to make it work with the API, replace the test with the post request. And now you find the end of the select statement and paste this uh, with connection in. Um, there is a param variable v URL which we are going to put actually that was our first request that is the base URL of the API and then the endpoint we called was API authentication and you can either provide query strings in a nice syntax or in a simple syntax and get this over um, and we don't need anything else here so let's remove the rest and try it so it returned two tables to us the mandate list and the root object and uh, all I look at the moment is the token in the root object so let's get the token back with a peak command once I have that I can also drop the other two tables try this once again here is my token that I want to present in the next request so that's the first get data request Again, the same principle as before. We will do this in two steps. Number one, get the syntax right. We edit this connection here. Instead of calling that API, we will, for the time being, just get the mock page. And it's this time a get request. So save it. It's very simple. It has only one object here with with IDs and names. And now we have to make it work with the real URI. Part two, get the connection parameters. And again, find the end of the SQL statement, put in what needs to be put in, API buildings. Now we have to provide actually the bearer token. So everything that is written under headers here needs to be retyped in the script and where it reads authentication you put in bearer and the token which we meanwhile have in a variable because we've set it into this variable on the page before replace the test with the get request And you can see we got three lines back. That was pretty easy still. So the next example, and this is my last one for today, is a post request where we also have to provide a body. Still, same principle. Remember what we said. Part one, get the syntax right using the mock page. So again, I'm going to edit my test request. This time it's going to be a post request and we will simulate this one where we say API bookings. 
put this here, save the request, then select the data. We want to get the script. And here we can see a more complex JSON tree uh, returned to us. So the script we will get now is a little bit longer. It has multiple branches. And now we go to part two, replace and parameterize your request. So put this in, remove the first connection, search for the end of the select statement and replace it with connection. So the base URI, this time we go to API slash bookings. And now we have uh, multiple things to copy paste, page size 1000 as query strings. When it goes to header, we have that part with the bearer uh, and token. We do have the content type. And to have real fun, we also need to provide a body in this request. Um, and I have to parse this a little bit. So to make this work, I actually have to stick to the strict JSON format. So it's uh, quoted keys and quoted values. But uh, because I'm already in a quoted string in the script, I have to use two times quotes for each of these keys. So that's actually the right translation of that body. Uh, for the time being, let's just quit the script execution here and let's try. And actually then we have got data back. And you can see click actually converts a JSON tree into a tabular structure with a root element. And if I look at the root element, I notice one more thing. There are date and time fields that are coming back as a text. So I want them to be a timestamp field in click. And I have to massage the script a little bit. So working with the date field, when the field comes back uh, in an ISO date format, there are two parts that I have to parse the left 10 characters and then the next six characters starting after position 12. So there are two formulas, left and mid, which will get that part for me. And then I have to tell how to interpret this. So with a date hash and a time hash function. So that load statement here is really a standard load statement and you can do everything you learned in click script courses. Um, I'm getting that uh, date format right. So it's going to be a date time field and it's also formatted in timestamp as I provided in the beginning of the section. So you will notice timestamp format is defined here. And in this case, it's going to return a US format for me. I also would like to get the subdimensions created. There is also a code snippet for this. Let's call this the auto calendar function. And with that command, I will get the free date field that I have and, and apply the auto calendar on it. So I will get all the subdimensions like year, year, month, month, week, etc., etc. And take out that exit script. move it behind auto calendar and now um, execute it once more. Now I'm in the creative part and you see these are all proper date time fields so I can use a year month and I can 
start working with that data as you would with any other data. Right, before I close, a couple of announcements. On the 14th of June in Vienna, there will be a charity event for my African projects by Wissy Hope. And I will be at connections between May the 13th and May 17th in Dallas. So that is really a great event for all Click customers, developers, partners to see firsthand what's coming next and hopefully i see you there as well with that have fun with click products see you in the next video